Okay, our application is complete. Um, we have done all the get, the delete, the post, put and the patch endpoints. Uh, so far our data structure is just in the memory, so that's not great. Whenever we restart at the application, everything is reset. Um, but for now that's okay. So now we would like to deploy it because the problem is so far we only run it in our console. Uh, we can test it, but no one else apart from us can access it. It's running on our computer and when, whenever we shut down our computer, it stops. Uh, so what you want to do is you want to deploy it on a server so that it runs 24 seven on the internet. Um, and we use Heroku here, as I mentioned, it has free options, so it's really great for experimenting. Uh, there are, of course, many more cloud services. So AWS, the Azure, Microsoft Cloud, uh, there are countless options as Google. Uh, they are usually, uh, they can be very confusing in the beginning. Um, and so you need to get used to that, but down in the principles, they're all the same. Uh, so. Let's maybe start off by, by looking at what Heroku has to offer. Yes, we do not need. So if you just go to Heroku, you can do a, a free sign up. I have already logged in, so I can see different things. But uh, you see all my different uh, applications that are running and you can create a new one. So I think there is a limit, certain number of things that can run, but for testing, this is, uh, this is good enough. You can also see that they, my applications run in different uh, locations. They run with different programming languages. So it's Node.js, I have some stuff in Python and uh, you can do all these different things. If we go into any of them, uh, for example, this one, I have no idea what's running here. You can uh, see that there are a number of configurations you can do, for example, dynos, that's basically the uh, the process, the, the application that is running, you can change that. So there are different options and then, then they start costing. So uh, there are different things. For example, the free version, what happens is when you don't use it for a time, it starts getting inactive, it starts sleeping. And then the next time you call it, it takes a couple of seconds to start up. So that's something you don't want to have in a professional environment, but it's, it's a good start. Uh, you have add-ons, so here, for example, you could add a database. Uh, if I search for Mongo, you find the, the MongoDB plugin that I'm using. Again, there are free options and not, and there are all sorts of <coughs> So there are all sorts of different things you can add. Some of them are for free, some of them are not. Um, and we'll start off without anything. We'll later on add, add the MongoDB database. And then there are all sorts of other things that might be useful. So you can say, how do you actually deploy this? Uh, and again, this is the reason I'm using Heroku because it's extremely easy to deploy using Git, using the command line. Um, and then there are, for example, metrics that measure how has the activity been and so on. So you can do this. Again, they are only available in this case for, for uh, uh, subscriptions that cost but then you can get, uh, add measurements, which is of course very useful. Uh, and you see the, the deploy activity and so on. So that's uh, what you can do. And the deployment in Heroku is, as I said, very easy. You have a command line interface that you can install. Uh, and that's something you need to do. The other thing is you need to install Git if you haven't done that. Uh, it's a very popular version control system. You definitely need to get used to that because it's the standard uh, that you'll use all over the place. So if you haven't, get familiar with Git. Uh, even though for this course, you don't need a lot of knowledge in it. So it's, it's fairly easy. Um, <clears throat> if we want to deploy and we'll just try this out, uh, you have to create a new application in Heroku. And then you basically have to follow these uh, commands. So you have to initialize a new Git repository. You have to add the files that you want to add. You have to commit them uh, and then you deploy. So this is what we'll do. What I have created here is a folder deployment. And in this folder, I have just copied our application that doesn't have anything. So 
uh, it's exactly the same that I've just shown previously where all the endpoints are implemented, nothing else. Um, and this I can deploy, but then nothing happens uh, because I also need a JSON file that tells me what exactly needs to be installed. So I need to have uh, a JSON file with the right name. Uh, the main script is called to do's all and p. Uh, <clears throat> I have added a start command uh, that really does not matter. This just means that instead of doing note this file, I can just run npm start. Uh, so that's nice to have. I can add myself as an author. Uh, I can. I don't know if this is the right dependency, so let's add it again. npm install express save. <clears throat> and I probably need more dependencies. I also need the body parser. So let's add that one as well. And now we can do exactly what's written in the, uh, in the website I just showed you in the instructions. So I initialize my repository. I add all the files I want to add. And that's my JavaScript file. Um, and it's my package.json. Do not add the node modules or the package lock. These are created automatically. Uh, and especially the node modules is huge, so it takes forever if you want to add all of that. Then I commit, uh, initial commit. This is done. And now I go in and I use my Heroku command line interface to actually create a new application. Uh, the first thing you have to do is do Heroku login. I have already done that here, which just makes sure that you are actually logged in and you're allowed to use this. Uh, so now if I do Heroku create, it starts creating a new thing. And now I already have an, an internet address and host address. It's HTTPS fierce castle 63,539.herokuapp.com. Uh, you can give these better names, by the way. So I don't have to have that. If I go there, nothing will happens, uh, happen because I have not deployed anything. So that's what happens next. Um, now Heroku has added automatically the right Git repository to my, uh, to my Git here. So I can now continue uh, and I can deploy my code. So I can do just a git push to the Heroku master. Um, if I spell it correctly, it should work. <clears throat> so now it starts pushing the code up on the repository. And it says build succeeded. Uh, and you see that it actually runs npm install. So it detects automatically that this is a uh, a Node.js project. It installs the right modules, 50 packages, uh, and it deploys. And now if we reload, probably nothing will happen. We'll see. It depends on how smart Heroku is. So you see, it takes a while. Something is trying to get to work and you see that there are also other options for example deploying branches and so on so you can uh, look at that later on so there is a lot of stuff you can do otherwise <clears throat> now here nothing is happening um, and the main reason for that most likely is because we haven't told uh, Heroku how to start our application. Um, and that's actually something that for some reason it does not detect automatically. So what we'll have to create is another file. And you can search that in the Heroku app uh, documentation. So you can just say deploy Node.js. It will probably tell you how exactly to do that. So it says, what do you need? <clears throat> And there's one thing we need, uh, and that is a so-called proc file. 
So uh, what Heroku is looking for is a, a file that tells Heroku how to start, what to start. Um, and that file in our case looks very, very easy. So we'll just go into that and create it. So you just go into your deployment folder, you create a new file and you call it proc file. Important is that the P here is actually capital. And now we just tell the script run npm start. Uh, and now there's actually something I need to look up because I never remember the details, whether I need uh, whether I need the quotation marks or not. No, I do not need them. So, and that's all it is. So you just need to tell Heroku run npm start whenever this is being started. So the web process in Heroku is just a, uh, a specific type that can receive external HTTPS traffic. Uh, so whenever you have a web server, which is what we do in our case, we want to receive HTTP requests and answer them. You need to tell Heroku for this web process, please use the following command. Um, and now I add this file uh, and I just commit again. Add a proc file and I push to master. And now Heroku just does the same thing again. It installs Node.js, it runs npm start, um, it builds and it compresses and then it starts the application. So deployed, uh, let's have a look whether this is better now. There might be still things that I have missed, we'll see. <coughs> We'll see whether I have actually removed my start script. No, it's still there, so this should work. The dependencies are there. The proc file is there. So typically this should work. Then there's always something you forget, so we'll see what Heroku comes up with. So it does not seem to work. Uh, and now the interesting question is what has happened? And you could maybe try to find that in the access or somewhere in the logs. Uh, here you see application error, check your logs for details. Uh, and this is now an important thing because we don't have our command line here. So here nothing is running. So you cannot check if there's an error. Uh, and <clears throat> One way to access the logs is to use again the Heroku command line interface to just get uh, the right information. So we want to use Heroku logs, for example, uh, from our app. Fierce Castle. And you see that it has been started, it's listening. Uh, why is it not working? Now, one thing that has happened here is that we have assigned port 3000. Here we go. We tell the express application, please run on port 3000. And this is a typical example for stuff that happens when you deploy things on another server. Uh, this might not be in agreement with what Heroku wants you to do. So Heroku, and it's the same with most other uh, cloud providers, have specific settings for where should your application run. We already have one. We already have told Heroku, uh, on your specific web process, please start the application. That makes sure that it actually runs on the right IP address and so on. We don't have to care about it. But the other thing is the port. <clears throat> We have to figure out what is the port you want us to run this. Um, and 
there might be an option to go into the documentation, find the right port number and then write it in here. Um, what is much more common is to use environment variables. And again, this is something that you have in pretty much all cloud deployments uh, are config variables. So I can set them myself. I can set variables and we'll get to why that is useful. But there are also some that are included. Uh, and in our case, Heroku has a config variable for the port. So <clears throat> we can just access the port uh, using config variables. Let's see whether we find it here. Uh, no, we don't. And if not, then I have it somewhere else one of my other applications. So this is again something you need to find out in the documentation. So what we do here is we say try to access the environment variables. So that's something that the operating system sets. In our case Heroku does that. And check whether there is a variable called port. If this is undefined uh, then the OR kicks in and we assign 3000. So this means that if I run the application locally on my machine, this will be ignored and the application runs on 3000 as usual. If port is defined, then we just run the application there instead. So uh, this variable should look differently. Now let's try this. I have changed my application so I need to uh, push it again <clears throat> and as you have seen or as you have not seen rather uh, there was no error here so there was no problem it has run my application on port 3000 the problem is just that the configuration in Heroku is in such a way that port 3000 is simply not reachable from the outside. So the application was running, I could just not access it. Now, let's see what the logs say. Uh, now you actually see that it runs on some other port, some pretty strange port. Uh, and that's what Heroku has defined. So it has said, this is the port you need to run the application on. And now finally, if I run uh, it again, or if I access it again, you see that I get operation not supported. This is actually what I want. So if I do slash users, I get Alice and Bob. Uh, and now the difference, the important difference is this application runs on the internet. So all of you could access this. Uh, I don't have it only on my computer. So there's a big difference here and it runs 24 seven. Of course, as I said, this is the free version. So it goes to sleep at some point. Uh, if I would pay for this, then it would really run nonstop. Uh, and of course this URL is maybe not very practical, but uh, for that uh, you then have to buy a domain. So if you want any nicer name that points to this location, you need to pay and get a domain. So that's the deployment thing. Um, as we have seen, there are a couple of things we need to look at. We need to figure out how to push our code. Uh, we need to have a certain adaptation. For example, in our case, we needed to find out what is the right port number. Uh, we needed to add the proc file, so the file that tells Heroku how to run our application. Uh, and then we needed to push all of that. So that's how the deployment works. Uh, and now in the final step, we'll add a database. So we'll finally get away from our, uh, from our IDs, uh, from our local uh, storage here. So this one is kind of refreshed every time I restart the application. We'll now use a database to actually save this. <clears throat>